Lexi, you've been a part of a lot of monumental moments here at WWE, but how did it feel being out there when Stephanie McMahon announced that you were going to be a part of the first ever all-women's pay-per-view? It's very exciting. You know, we've had, like you said, all these monumental moments for women, and this is just another step in the women's evolution, and I'm very excited and very happy to be a part of it and, you know, to show why our women deserve these opportunities because we deliver, and we deliver over and over and over again. We've had main event matches. We've had historic matches, and now it's time to have historic pay-per-views, and I'm really excited, and it's going to be awesome. Now, Stephanie mentioned superstars, women superstars from past. If you could dream up a dream match, who would it be with? Ooh, Trish Stratus, 100%. <laughs> and you know, you know, little girls all over watch you, watch all of the women superstars. So what message do you hope that they are receiving from this? That literally you can do whatever you put your mind to. There is no limit for women whatsoever. And we're just proving that every day. And WWE has been a big forefront of that. And every woman in every sport has been a forefront of that. And it's just awesome to be the next step in that journey. All right. Congratulations, Alexa. <laughs> Sasha, you've been a part of a lot of firsts, but how does it feel to be a part of yet another first, Evolution, the first ever all-women's pay-per-view? What emotions are you feeling? Um, uh, so many. I, uh, you know, everyone talks about it on the internet, and I had no idea what it was going to be, but right before I went out, I just felt my heart like, just go so warm because we have come such a long way. And, you know, I, I really felt it, too, when Stephanie and, and Triple H were like, just saying everything. I, man, I just feel so grateful to be here. And I'm so excited for the women because we have busted our butts for a very long time. Not just us, this generation, but past generations and the future to come. Um, but I'm so excited, man. I can't believe it. And I can't wait to steal the show. I'm so excited. And um, who knows what these matchups are going to be, too. She said the past. I can wrestle Trish Stratus, maybe. Who knows? But, um, yeah, my heart, my heart feels so overjoyed and it feels so warm right now it's like once to come out of my chest i'm very excited well congratulations you deserve it thank you <laughs> welcome ladies and gentlemen to episode 116 of the josh lopez wrestling podcast right here on apple Podcasts, stitcher youtube wherever you get your podcasts from my name is josh lopez you can follow me on twitter and instagram at notorious joshy i am alongside the clown prince of podcasting and my good brother Adam Daly. What's going on, my man? Josh, what's up? Uh, what's up, everyone listening out there? Uh, man, there's some there's some polarizing news this week, huh? Yes, sir. I miss a lot on social media when I don't go on it. I, can, <laughs> I can't I can't wait to hear the blind takes. Yes, you know it's it's always a constant in this wrestling bubble that we live in. There's wrestling shows to talk about. There's a podcast that comes with. There's a bunch of articles and. There's always hot takes to get into. So nice I conflict. promoted this on Twitter the other day that we're introducing a new segment, and it's kind of spawning off of something that we touched on on last week's podcast. By the way, if, you, if you're a first-time listener to the Josh Lopez Wrestling Podcast, welcome. Um, this is a laid-back type of show. I just forewarn you as you're listening in your earbuds right now, it could be a Friday, it could be a Sunday, it could be a Monday. Whenever you're listening to this podcast right now, I understand we're here and we're bringing positive vibes to the show. This is a positive mental attitude type of show here. We're not here to pop a blood vessel uh, or have a heart attack over a wrestling show. So if you're a first-time listener, we're here to have some fun. We're going to crash some jokes. Maybe we may some, say some things that may be offensive. Not too offensive, but, hey, we're not living in the whole be politically correct world, okay? So I just want to forward everybody. Uh, so- but – but we're open to having new good brothers and good sisters. We want to reach out to you guys and hope you guys enjoy what we're bringing to the table each weekend. We're trying to do something different for the wrestling fans who want to actually have some fun with this shit. You know, you know, being a fan of something, you can't have fun with it. It's not a bad thing to have fun with the things that you like. Now, there's something wrong with having constructive criticism about things here and there about entertainment products, but... Um, as always, since doing the show since uh, 2016 and all the other shit I've done beforehand, my main goal, any type of show I ever created or was a, a part of, I'm here to have fun with wrestling. That, that's the mantra of this show. Yeah, and I'll admit, I, I, I'm here to tell very off-color jokes and uh, work on material. So that's, that's basically what I do. So uh, if anybody gets offended, it's probably coming from me. <laughs> 
And for the loyal supporters of the show, please uh, leave us your review on Apple Podcasts and on YouTube. We appreciate that as well. So uh, we're going to touch on uh, the very big, exciting news for WWE Evolution that's uh, taking place on October 28th from uh, the Borough City of USA uh, at the Nassau Coliseum. Bro. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And we're also going to talk about um, uh, Alistair Black against Tommaso Camp in their NXT title match that happened last night. I'm going to get into that. I'm going to spread some thoughts about uh, uh, Impact Slammiversary pay-per-view that happened on Sunday. And I'll catch you guys up with what's going on in the G1 since um, – your boy is uh, putting in some grunt work for you motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, make sure to check out ProWrestlingTranscriptions.com. That's my website. That's where I have all my play-by-play articles so you can see what I'm doing non-on-air. So check out ProWrestlingTranscriptions.com. And then I, I, I was mentioning a couple of minutes ago, uh, we got a new segment. It's called A Nimrod Summer. So I'm taking hot takes that I see through live uh, Twitter sessions during Raw and SmackDown or any of your favorite wrestling shows, and I'm bringing it to the table. We may rip them. We may laugh at it. I don't know where this is going to go, but, <laughs> um, you know, I, I try to uh, mix things up here and there. Uh, last week we did the Yacht Club, and last week's show is definitely worthy of the title of that fucking segment. But I don't have any Yacht Club clips to play for you guys this week. Um, sometimes yours truly needs to take a break from listening to wrestling podcasts and just shits on the product the entire time. Uh, there's only so much negativity that can uh, see through my brain threshold, and I start losing my IQ points. And, you know, last week we hear people talk about, oh, I feel betrayed. I'm being abused by WWE booking. <laughs> like, how is that a thing in 2018? But with that said, uh, let's get to the <laughs> part of this show. <laughs> Um, Adam, uh, you had an interesting weekend, huh? Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't get victimized by a wrestling program like people claim that <laughs> claim that they have. Um, no, I went to wait. So if anybody truly appreciates the Waffle House, I, I went to a Waffle House this weekend and I know that shouldn't be, that shouldn't sound like important or special to anybody, but, uh, you know, I didn't realize we had a Waffle House in the Pittsburgh area. And my wife and I drove 30 miles to go to a Waffle House at like four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning on a, on, on Sunday morning. Um, yeah. So listen, here's, I guess this is the story that I wanted to tell about it because I like guess no night ever really goes as like as planned, right, Josh? Like there's, there's never a night that really like I, at least anymore as an adult, you find out that you, you, if you, the more you make plans, the more they, they just fall apart and you just you know, keep going on. But so our whole plan was like our daughter's been away for like a, a week and any parents out there can absolutely understand where I'm coming from here. Uh, my, you know, our daughter is, is, has been at my dad's house for about, you know, for since like Saturday or something. We take this on a Thursday. And, uh, so we, you know, Sam and I've had the house ourselves. So we were like Saturday night, we were like, screw it. Let's, let's drink. Let's get drunk. That's what adults do. And you know, we don't, we don't drink. We're not drinkers. So go out, get some beer, come home. We have this giant game of beer pong, you know, that we were going to decide to play, have all these cups filled. It was this unique version of beer pong where all this stuff, we each took like two sips of beer and we're like, I don't want to fucking do this. So just like they ended up dumping out like all this beer, uh, had sex. She fell asleep. And then I played video games all night. And then we went to Waffle House at four in the morning. So to be honest, it, it was, it was a pretty good, it was, it was a pretty good night that way. Um, you know, like this is where typically the guys will be like, yo, we have sex for like three hours. Listen, ladies that are listening out there or gentlemen, I, nobody has sex for three hours. First of all, nobody wants to, nobody ever wants to, nobody does. If, if a guy says that that's their way of saying, Hey, it was three pumps and then I was out, which is really, to me, that's, I mean, that, that's just getting the job done quick. Um, it's just being efficient with your time. I don't know. Uh, but no, so we get to this Waffle House and I listen, there's a, there's a tradition with Waffle House where you go to Waffle House and you play the jukebox. I did it down South all the time. I was used to be very drunk all the time in these, in these Waffle Houses though. So it was a much different experience. Uh, being uh, sober was a little more unique one, but I don't like, I'm not a dude, Josh, that like I don't walk into a, an establishment and like, I don't scope the, the area and see like what the balance of like what, you know, of power is in the place. You know, I go to my seat and fucking put my back to the wall so that like I could still see the door, but like, I don't, you know, survey the area. 
So I'm, I'm playing some, you know, playing some music and I'm, you know, song after song is hitting and like, I could tell like the staff starting to get into it a little bit more and more. Like, uh, I had some prints going, people, were, you know, jamming, like slowly get people getting in and out of stuff. And I've been into that Weezer, uh, cover of Toto's Africa lately a lot, like a lot, like, you know, I'm a big Weezer fan, which is like the whitest, like fucking band, by the way, ever, like the most milky white band ever is, is Weezer. And like, and, I, and because me, I don't pay attention to this shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not one of those dudes like, well, I don't see color. Like everybody sees color, but like, I just don't go into a place to like fucking do a body count, you know? Well, I just realized all of a sudden I'm playing this song Africa and every, I, we're the only white people in this entire fucking establishment. And I was like, oh shit. And the only reason why I thought, oh shit is because like it's 2018 American. You just never know if somebody's going to take something the wrong way. You know what I mean? Fortunately, I think I saved it with the rest of the playlist and everything was good and we were all jamming. And it was all good, but I'm not going to lie for a minute. I, I thought to myself, wow, I probably sit here and I'm, I look like a fucking, like, I look like one of those assholes. Like I look like Trump dude going in, trying to cause shit when like, it was just, I Sam and meanwhile, fucking poor Sam, she's staring at me. Like, are you serious? You really did this? Like you're doing this? Like only you would play this song. And it's like, no, I didn't, I didn't realize it. I felt like John Mulaney, like it, it was the accidental John Mulaney. Like when he did, you know, at the salt and pepper diner, when he played, uh, you know, uh, what's new pussycat 22 times and through and it's one, it's not unusual. I felt like this was the moment of like accident definitely playing the wrong song and not it, it, the wrong audience, you know, um, yeah. fortunately I saved it with the rest of the playlist and, and all's well that ended well. But, um, yeah, it was a, it was a, you know, I don't know. And I've, I've, I've never felt uncomfortable like that and I shouldn't feel uncomfortable like that. And it's not like anybody made me. It's just that, but dude, that's how I, I feel like that's how like social media and not, not the media. Like that's what I mean. It's not, it's so, like, look at how we act on social media. That's, that's right. There is enough to give people anxiety, you know? Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically the, you know, like everyone always has like the, you played yourself moment of the day. There we go. I always tell the, the Adam Daly digs himself a hole and fucking dives right in at story of the week. There was this week's <laughs> all for some waffle house, man. 60 miles round trip for some waffle house, the fucking hash browns with the cheese. You guys know, you guys know out there. I'm so adamant about this uh, because we talked about this the other night, and uh, I haven't had Waffle House since I was six years old. So this is like peaked out. I haven't had Waffle House since. Um, I loved Waffle House, but I actually live in the city of Chicago. I don't live in Rockwell. I don't live in uh, Midlothian or Lombard. I don't live in the suburbs. I live in the actual city, so we don't have Waffle House in uh, in the actual city. Yeah. Uh, it's probably um, better. <laughs> uh, whenever I go to Pittsburgh, I'll get some fucking Waffle House. Then Jesus Christ, we'll make the trip up. We'll make the trip up. No, no, there's better. Listen, there's better establishments in Pittsburgh, <laughs> and Waffle House <laughs> is not a Pittsburgh destination. That's I, I think it, it tastes better in the South, where it's it's extra greasy and and my cholesterol can really spike on that one. Uh, a couple things I wanted to expand on when you uh, were going over. Um, yeah, I had a big trend of white boy rock bands uh, during my elementary school year. We had Weezer. We had Fall Out Boy. Let's see who else I can add to the list. Uh, Avenged Sevenfold. That was really big, especially when I was in eighth grade. Uh, that, was, that was the whole the Guitar Hero and Rock Band era. And you had all those bands <laughs> Yeah. In, in, a, in a weird way, uh, it was cool to get their promotion out there because they had albums come out at the same time and they get the, the exposure of their songs on a video game like that. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Guitar Hero did a lot for a lot of bands' careers. Um, I, you know, dude, back here in, in Pittsburgh. The older ones. Yeah. I remember when I first got into Avenged Sevenfold around here, man, and which was I, – I thought it was so bizarre that, like, they didn't catch on in Pittsburgh quicker. But a lot of my boys were like ripping on me, like, "Oh, what the fuck are you listening to? What is this shit?" I'm like, yo, these dudes are badasses. Like, what, you know? <laughs> and then the unfortunate situation with the Rev, you know, my my tattoo guy down in North Carolina is a big time uh, Avenged Sevenfold fan. That's what we used to just basically go down there and get inked up, and we'd watch like uh, watch uh, Avenged Sevenfold like concert videos. So House of Ink in Monroe, North Carolina, go get some ink done. As for JT, he is the man. I know you brought up tattoos because it's going to transition to how my weekend and past couple of days have been. Um, there you go. The, the, the art of the tattoo shop. There you go. Yes. <laughs> um, speaking of the bands that benefited from uh, Guitar Hero and stuff, uh, Disturbed. 
uh, Disturb is a Chicago based uh, band and uh, I forgot the name of the lead singer. I feel like such an idiot right now. I know it's Dave something. Uh, it's, yeah, you guys I, I don't remember. In the pop but anyway, the lead yeah, singer they, of uh, Disturb got piercings and a tattoo uh, six years ago today at uh, my godmother's tattoo shop. Uh, so, uh, Infamous Inc. is on Ashland and North Avenue for any of our Chicago listeners. If you want to get yourself a tattoo or piercing, come say hello to your boy. I'm I'm basically running the ship at night <laughs> during the week. So I oversee the shop and I clean out all the tattoo tubes and I'm dodging bleach like we're playing dodgeball and shit. Boom, boom. <laughs> Yo, I, I really want that fact that you just told to end up on Jeopardy one day. Is like the, uh, like a thousand uh, like a thousand dollar like trivia question. The lead right. singer of the, the lead singer of Disturb got his piercings and tattoos done at what tattoo shop in Chicago, Illinois, on this date? <laughs> it's so random to know. That's amazing. Yo, know, I seen I seen the dude from Disturb. What, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Fucking Facebook. I fucking hate Facebook. Oh my god. But, um, dude, back in, back before Facebook and before people thought that social media was life, uh, when we didn't have that shit, um, I was, I was at a Disturbed in Corn show up at, uh, up at State College. And I think that the dude from Disturbed was going to fucking swing on someone, man. He, he was, somebody like did something, like threw something at him or something. He like stopped the song and was like, oh, I'll come into the crowd and beat the shit out of you. We were like, yeah, rock and roll. Uh, I was still a little straight edge rager at that time so i had a lot of angst in my in me <laughs> um well adam was um, having the adventure uh at waffle house at the tattoo shop i had a kind of a different experience not to the point where it was like super bad and i was pissed off or anything like that but just in any setting uh in the tattoo environment you have your cool people and you just get some odd requests and you also get some fucking idiots along the way um, I've been working at this tattoo shop since I came back home from New Orleans. So this is about be three months now. Yeah, it was in April. Right, right as I came back home from New Orleans, I started working at the shop. So it's been three months. And what I do at the shop, I oversee the shop. Obviously, as I mentioned before, I, I look over the jewelry and piercings. I put them in little bags and stuff and help you guys get your <laughs> earrings and all the fun stuff. Uh, I clean the tattoo tubes and the piercing clamps. Um, I'm not going to go over how to do that because I don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> but it's it's an interesting process. So basically, I'm I'm not fully a assistant manager by end because I'm overseeing the shop at night. I'm closing the place and I'm, I got a lot on my plate. I, I wear a lot of hats at, at the shop. So on Tuesday... You know, this is me and my friend Daryl. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Daryl, Daryl Harris, the tattoo artist that I hang out with on uh, Mondays and Tuesdays. Very talented guy, uh, 50 years old. Very interesting guy. He played a lot of jazz music back then. He's a bass player too, so um, it's cool hanging out with Daryl. Anyways, it's like I don't know, 6:30 during the day here in Chicago, and a guy comes in. I, and I'm not joking around as I'm describing this asshole that came in on Tuesday. We had a great, Make America Great hat. We, we started off with that. Full red regalia. We had a chain that looked like something that Kevin Fairline would wear. Hey, and, did, hey, did his MAGA hat have the Made in China tag on it like all the other ones? Asking yes. for a friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he had a blue day gold on uh, the hat and some K-Fed, uh, I don't know, type of jewelry or whatever. I was like, all right, you know. Some cheap it, gold. Please tell me it was like that ugly cheap gold looking shit. Yes. If you're still rocking gold in 2018, you're tacky as fuck. Yes. <laughs> Please stop. Um, so, you know, in, in these type of settings, um, you got to be cordial and this and that. And at first, the guy was talking to Daryl because Daryl is the tattoo guy. I hand the guy the information to fill out the tattoo and this and that. We have to scan IDs for the government and all this extra shit that goes on with uh, mm-hmm. running tattoo shops. So uh, you got to sign release forms before you get in. You also have an ID to make sure you're of age to get tattoo. And I'm f- I, a lot of I might be familiar with the process. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... <laughs> 
he wanted a MAGA tattoo on his back. This M A G A, not the whole "Make America Great" like lettering. It's just M A G A on his back, in the colors of the Cubs. <laughs> so one of it would be white, the next would be red, uh, and then the next would be blue, and then finish off with white because white, white America, Trump, everything's white now. <laughs> Flag <laughs> colors too. The red, white, and blue, right? Why would he? But but why? I, I, I was figure, I was trying to figure it out myself as he was explaining what he wanted. So, so there, he so, was, so he was going to get the ultimate bro tattoo, which is usually typically dudes get their last name on their shoulders, but this it was going to say MAGA. That's what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's going over the prices for the uh, tattoo for what we offer, right? And I'm in the background, like put up. Uh, Type in some data stuff to put in our in our computer that I, I lo- have a little area where I like scan a lot of the release forms I have to put on the computer in our processor. So I'm here, my my business be like, oh, okay, this is another client coming in, you know. <laughs> like, and when and you're in those type of things, you have to make sure that you don't put your in your own interests ahead of clients. You get in a way you have to be professional and have to be understanding this and that. Daryl was explaining uh, the um, The guy started getting a little salty, in a way. And for those that don't know, our leader, and I'm using air quotes very, very clearly as I'm looking at Adam on our screen right now as we record this. We don't have video for you guys to see, but we're talking on Skype right now. Um, but... You know, he started getting salty, and we have Donald Trump's going to be in the state of Illinois this week. I don't know if he's coming to Chicago. Hopefully not. <laughs> There's already enough protest that goes by his fucking building on State Street that people get arrested for no reason. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so he's like, "I come on, guys. You got to help me out. I, I got the hat on. I'm going to go see him down in Springfield this weekend. Him and Bruce Ronner are changing the city. Come on, guys. I want to make our leader proud. I thought this is a tattoo establishment uh, where you embrace uh, freedom of expression. And this Wait. Thing. God, God, God. Where did the Simpsons live? I know this is uh, – was the Simpsons live in Springfield? Yeah, Springfield. Are you sure – did this even ha- – did Springfield. this really happen or was this like one of those – like I think we're all starting to have like glitch in the matrix moments where like I, I think like – you know, I don't. I don't believe in like in, in organized religion or anything like that, guys. So don't yeah. don't you know judge me on that one. Don't at me. But you know, everybody has a theory that oh, we're just like a little science experiment that people are moving around. I think people just. I think someone caught you in a movie set like the Truman Show, and there and it was like a because this sounds like I'm. It sounds like a Simpsons episode. Oh, I need I need this tattoo for cheaper than what you would normally do it for, but you're going to do it for me, so I can go to Springfield. I'm going to meet up with Mr. Burns and and see Trump. Yeah, they called us. I mean, they called us election in whatever year it was. It was <laughs> so it, it, it started. I just started laughing like inside, like I was trying to do it vocally, and then he started like throwing. I started noticing some subtle like racial slurs towards uh, Daryl and I. Full disclosure: Daryl is African American. I'm Puerto Rican. So you got two guys of minority descent in the shop trying to handle some business. We have three young ladies trying to get ready for their tattoos and piercings in the shop. And we got our business to attend to. And this guy's gone a fucking five minutes soliloquy, like somebody whining about raw, about how the women are, uh, getting too much in the spotlight or this or that, you know, like Wait, we, so got, we got over the fucking price for the tattoos six times. Wait, you know, so- I'm not, I'm not the owner of the shop. You know, I am overseeing what's going on, so I'm kind of the owner at that time. But, you know, you know, yeah, we have to be professional in this and we can't put, oh, we're going to treat people this way because they're this political race or that race. I don't I don't deal with that. That's not the point. So well, you're, no, going, he- you're going on the fucking 10 minutes to look at about how uh, uh, Trump is great and we got fake news this and fake news that. Honestly, me and Daryl don't give a shit. <laughs> we don't. You're wasting our time. You're you're taking away for clients that are trying to get their stuff on as well. And it I sounds got- like that's all the dude wanted to do, to be honest. 
It, 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 to me, it sounds like because I don't, I don't know. Here's where it should start, start and end. It really has nothing to do with any political affiliation or anything. Hey, I want this tattoo for fifteen dollars. Okay, sorry, but our minimum is sixty dollars. All right, cool, thanks, I appreciate it. Because, like, to anybody out there that might be thinking about getting a tattoo, you should know this if you've gotten a tattoo. Yo, fifteen bucks ain't even a tip. Like if you if you tip your tattoo artist fifteen dollars, you have just, you you probably shouldn't go back to that tattoo artist. Just keep it at a hundred. And I don't care how much if you, I don't care if you go with the cheapest tattoo there, that tip better be a little, little bit more than fifteen bucks. Um, if you expect decent work the next time you go back to that establishment, that's just the easiest way that I could put it. So for so for anybody to even go into a tattoo place thinking they're getting in and out for fifteen bucks, unless there's some kind of special, um, there was a joint in Pittsburgh that was doing uh, on Halloween. They were doing uh, certain tattoos for thirteen bucks, for thirty three bucks, and for uh, something else. Like I think it was like sixty six or something like you know whatever. Uh, maybe maybe it was sixty nine. You know maybe it was, it was all like whatever. But um, but yeah, but I mean you're, you're not. And, but even still, you're still going to tip on top of that. You know what I mean? Because you're getting such a discount on that. So I mean, that's that's ultimately where it should begin and end before any of the other. It sounds more like dude just wanted to come in just to fucking just be a, just be difficult. Because that that's that is what has has come of this 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 society. Um, you know, I worked I worked in sales for 20 years. And you, we would, no matter where I would go, you would always get to the regular people that, would, that you deal with it. They would want to always tell you all their problems. They want to tell you all the same, you know, I had a, I, I called her the crazy Catholic lady. And, and if you're Catholic out there, please don't take offense to that. But I used to work in Steubenville, Ohio and somebody would come into, uh, come into my store all the time. And, and this, it was just a woman that was, there's a, 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 this story. It could be so layered and it's, it's really just for a stand up bit it, 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 at a later date. But, um, she used to come in and basically just lecture me on like you, your daughter needs to be Catholic. You need to teach your daughter about Jesus Christ. And I'm like, lady, you don't even know me. Like, what, who are you? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like you keep coming into my store trying to convert me into something like stop. And, and maybe, Looking to getting that mole removed on your face, um, but that might was a, probably a different story altogether too. So, but but dude, that that's I, I think sometimes people people just there, there's there's people in the world that they just they just want to go in and just fucking spout off because they know what's well, a business and you have to take it and that's where we're at. And dude, that, that we've been here since and 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 listen, this is this is absolutely right when people say what's well, been like is since before Trump was running running for president. You're right because white people didn't like Barack Obama. White dudes got, and, and that's ultimately like I was. It, it, realistically, you can't nine out of ten dudes that I've talked to that say, and I didn't vote for Obama, so don't don't fucking come at me with that shit either. But nine out of ten dudes, when you say, okay, well, why didn't you like Obama? They can't tell you. They'll just be like, well, I don't like his policies. Name one. Well, uh, you can't. So just just you know, I mean that's you know. So so ultimately, that's what that that's what this last election was. And right now, this is this is what the payoff for them was. The, 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 the feeling of what are you going to say when our, when our, our president says worse, you know, I mean, it's, this is basically the bullying tactic. This is where this is. And, and, and there's something that's dangerous about this, Josh, that, that, um, that, you know, I feel like this is, this is problematic for, for definitely in America, but now it's becoming a global issue is there's an, uh, there's a subconscious addiction to adrenaline. Um, we're addicted to conflict now. We need conflict. We don't, we don't feel whole if we don't have conflict. And that is absolutely an unhealthy trait, you know. Um, you know, I listen, I go to my therapist every week. And that's one of the biggest things that we talk about is that, you know, I, I grew up in a very chaotic environment and I, I always make the joke that I'm, I'm, I'm like Ricky Bobby's dad. I start to get like, every time something seems like perfect, I, I'm like, yeah, I gotta make this, gotta fuck this up somehow, you know? That's like, that's kind of, but that's that. It's, it's, and you don't realize it's the, the chaos. There, there's a calm in the chaos uh, in, in a way. And, um, and I think that's where we're at right now as a society, as a society. And I, unfortunately, it's because of a lot of resentment from a previous president, uh, a lot of resentment towards a current president, and everything's hitting just a boiling point. And um, and, and it's it's just it's it's fucking ridiculous, is what it is. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's 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 a shame that somebody thinks that they could just go in those. Because to me, Josh, I've I've worked with the public for like I said, I was in sales for twenty years. Different different this that and the other things. Um, that was somebody to me. It sounds like coming in just trying to start shit. Because you, you got to know that you're not going to fucking get out of a tattoo shop for 15 bucks. That's, and that's, I don't know how big the dude was or whatever, but if you're getting a shoulder piece or, you know, going shoulder to shoulder, you know, and I got something better. Let's, let me ask you a question, Josh. 
when he sobered up, <laughs> like I was just assuming that he was drunk, but, but what's going to happen when like my man tries to go get like married? Hey, what's, so what's up with this MAGA thing on the back? Yo, I just want to really like, that's going to be such a deal breaker to every fuck. like explain that one for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh man. Yo, I, we, we get a lot of strange stuff in uh, tattoo environments and requests and that. And, um, you know, people have a right to uh, express how they feel about certain things. You know, I got some crazy. I, I, don't, I don't have. I don't have to ride with a certain political party to feel like I'm morally correct or whatever. That's not how I feel. Uh, but you know, there's there's a difference from having superiority as a client and like someone that's older than you, than acting like an entitled jackass. Not only do we have an issue of having to feel like everything is right. We have to be right and have internal conflict, but we have an entitlement issue. Not just people my age or younger, but people it's older everybody. than me. Yep. And, and I'm sure this is not the first time. I, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's dealt with people like that in different working environments. But guys, I'm 24 years old. I uh, all The only thing I ever done work-wise is fucking articles and music stuff. <laughs> and I, I got out of college like, three years ago. So like, yeah, I, I don't have like other work experience where you guys are at uh, produce stores or appliance stores. And this. And I'm sure you guys deal with way worse than I have, but I just thought that was just fucking weird. Cause <laughs> 20, first 20 uh, so think about this. Like I said, I, I was in sales for 20 years of my life and that's almost your entire life. I've seen everything from little kids shitting on some of like if I ran a store, uh, you know, and it was like maybe an inline store, a mall store, something like that. I've had little kids sh literally shit right on the floor, like shit, like shake it down their pant leg, kick it under like poster things. Like when I was running like sports, like sports merchandise stores and shit like that. That was one of the more unique things I've, I've ever had. A uh, little kid just pissed his pants on one of my stores. I was playing a video game. Because he was just, I mean, you can't stop playing the game. Listen, if, if it's the fourth quarter, it's the fourth quarter. And I mean, you, you know, I, maybe my man just got that, that. That's determination. That's grit. And uh, he wasn't giving a shit. Uh, and his mother was like, he, no, he didn't piss his pants. Well, that, how's his pants all wet? He didn't piss his pants. But my floor is wet and so are his pants. Lady, he pissed his pants. Um, he's, I mean, I, dude, I've seen, like, I've seen... I've had people come in try to get free shit for like it's the same thing like because this because whether it be political affiliation religious affiliation um, whether it be uh, dude I, I I've heard it all seen it all had it all I mean it, it's it's the public the it's it's the, you're right it, it's not it, it is not a generational thing when it comes to the customer is always right I learned from a very young age it was my parents that taught me so don't blame like this new generation my parents generation was was some of the original con artists of let's call this company and lie to them and get a free credit here or let's call it so that's what always like I, I find comical about like labeling any generation entitled when you're right Josh it's just everybody is entitled right now and and, and, and that's and the sad part is is for every guy that you have just like that going into somewhere going give me a mug give me a malaga I need my, 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 my um, there was someone, you know, doing the same thing, trying to muscle somebody up, somebody else, you know, just on the flip side. And that, cause it's, that's, you know, it's not as much, please. I'm not going to say as much cause Trump people are just fucking loud and it's fucking, it's ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it, there's a, a problem right now with, um, not understanding market value and understanding that there's a market value for a reason, you know, um, like people who are saying, you know, oh, WWE needs to change so much, but their stocks at $85 per share. You know what I mean? Like that is an entertainment brand right there. I, I guess I remember I, back in 2012, I, I challenged somebody that I work with that did, did a lot of investing to invest in WWE and they laughed at me. And I said, I said, listen, you're a long game guy. This is the best long game that you'll ever play. Take it or leave it. And the dude left it. And I know the dude's, I know he's eating crow now because this is just, I mean, it, that I, I never foresaw it going to like $85 like this. I saw WWE getting like 55, 60 bucks at one day. Like I never, not, and not like almost like overnight over the past year and a half. But yeah. To wrap this up before we move on, um, just to remember folks, you know, I'm going to be cordial to anybody that comes to the shop and, you know, I am a professional person in it. And Adam's hanging out with me in person as well. I'm not 
negative. I'm not in, in a bad mood. I, I'm more laid back than I am having to be on here and express myself on the show. But I'm not obnoxious in person. And I try to be reasonable with people. But we have other clients in the shop and you want to uh, stop and pump your chest and drop soliloquies that have nothing to do with what we're talking about, then that's where we have to draw the line. And the better, I guess the, for me, the better moral is, is like, especially when, you know, when you're dealing with people in the service industry, you know, don't forget everybody started somewhere, you know what I mean? And you, you never know who that person is and like treat people like human beings. Cause I don't, don't think that, you know, the, the customer isn't always right. That, that's what I always does. Oh, well, there's something with this or like, you know, cause I was in, in, you know, dealing with like wireless phones and like technology for a long time. And it, there was always somebody somehow trying to get like this amount off or that amount off. And it's like. Yo, man, this ain't my store. Like, I run the motherfucker, but, like, do I look like I have CEO on my name tag? You know, like, do you really think that I'd be in this, like, I'd be in Steubenville, Ohio, if I was, like, you know, so, let's, uh, I, there's not too many CEOs that want to frequent Steubenville, Ohio. Um, you know, maybe some criminal masterminds, but that's about it. Um, anyway, I think that's a good segue. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um... One last thing before we go into uh, WWE Evolution, because that's going to be the big bulk of our show today. Uh, Evolution. Uh, coming out on Raw this past Monday. But I do want to touch on some things that happened outside of WWE before we get into that. But this won't be long. This will be like five minutes or so. Uh, really quick, uh, last night we had uh, Lucha Underground and uh, NXT on television. Lucha Underground crowned the new Gift of the Gods champion in El Dragon as Tekka Jr. Uh, one thing for those who watch Lucha, Lucha, Lucha Underground uh, weekly and all the seasons, uh, especially with uh, the Cueto family, there's always one constant with them. They're always changing stipulations and matches. <laughs> one week we have a six-way match. The next we're having an over-the-top, uh, over-the-top row battle royal to eliminate three other people in the playing field. <laughs> so we're supposed to have a seven-way match, and then it ends up being the three-way to the main event. So, you know, the Cueto family keeps you on your toes. So, uh, again, props to Lucha uh for that. It was, it was a fun show last night. And also NXT, uh, Aleister Black put his NXT title on the line against Tommaso Ciampa. And here's a little um, explanation for yours truly, where while people think I just uh, go with the flow and accept everything that happens in wrestling, I don't agree with this decision of Aleister losing the title in a taping at, uh, on the NXT show, but it's not my hill to die on. I know he's going to be at TakeOver. I know he's going to have a title match. And now Johnny Gargano is going to be inserted to it. So, yeah, we're going to have Black, Champa, and Gargano at TakeOver Brooklyn 4, and it's going to be awesome. So, while I don't agree with the decision, you're not seeing me going on Twitter bitching about it. Aleister Black is my favorite guy at NXT. I didn't, I didn't think he should have had a transitional run where he loses his title on a random NXT show. But, hey, it's not my hill to die on. So, I was wanted to let you guys know that. And then lastly, um, TNA, uh, uh, TNA Impact, whatever you want to call it, it's kind of like Los Angeles, San Diego. It's the fucking Chargers. It's TNA. It's Impact. It's all It's all the same shit. It's like the uh, Raiders. They're 10 different things. I don't know where my team's at right now. Right. Um, Impact had their pay-per-view slam anniversary this past Sunday in Toronto. Very cool venue they had the pay-per-view at. I thought it was very cool. Interesting bar called the Rebel uh, Entertainment Complex. Uh, very dope place. I've never been to Toronto before, but I think it'd be a cool place to check out. Uh, so I watched the pay-per-view, and it was a very, very good show. Uh, I'll, give pro- I'll give credit where credit to you. Impact has really stepped up their game for their product wise over the last eight months. Uh, ever since switch from um, Scott Moore and Don Callis taking over the creative side of the company and what's going on and go home from a uh, promotion side and the business side, there's not been a lot of drama as they were back then <laughs> when he's dealing with the whole Destination America stuff, but uh, Impact is bringing some good vibes. They're bringing out good shows. Uh, Austin Aries and Moose was the main event of the show, which was really good. It was a very nasty, hardcore match with uh, Pentagon Jr. and Sammy Callahan. Sammy Callahan got issues. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. You know, I, I, I actually had a chance to uh, talk to Sam Callahan when I was at an AEW show before. Very cool guy. This guy is a shot in the head, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's cool, but I, I, I am a big Sammy Callahan, uh, Callahan fan. Hey, he's, listen, it, the best of us are crazy, and uh, us crazy ones own that like a badge. So, and we are most 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 of us crazy ones are very humble, and until you put us on that edge, because all yeah, it takes is one bad day. Yeah, don't do the, don't press the trigger buttons. Um, <laughs> Uh, yet, uh, other matches on the show, uh, Tommy Dreamer was on the show, uh, his crazy old ass doing house and parkour matches with Eddie Edwards, uh, uh, I don't know still able to do that, man. That's, that's insane. And then, uh, other stuff, you know, yeah, they had the women on the show, Allie and Tessa Blanchard was a very good match. Overall, I just thought it was a very good pay-per-view. If you haven't watched Impact, uh, you know, you don't have to watch the live show live. Uh, I usually don't watch the show live, but I, I, cram out the article in like i don't know an hour and 10 minutes <laughs> like you know you don't have to sit down and watch impact on pop every week live live so if you want to check out impact breeze through it record it on dbr give your give your thoughts on it they uh they've really scaled back in a lot of ways they've been presenting their product and it, it's good uh, I, I wouldn't say it's great or anything like that, but I don't feel the lull that I had a couple years ago when I was covering Impact every fucking week for Wrestling Zone, and it's like the show would never end. <laughs> so uh, go, go go give Impact a shot. Um, and then finally, the G1. Today's uh, night eight of 19 G1 shows. I did not get a chance to cover the show this morning. I'm going to do that later on today. Uh, but we have a lot of big matches. Juice Robinson and Kenny Omega today. Naito and Tamataga. Oh, my bad. Roman Reigns, uh, uh, New Japan cousin, uh, gimmick and hairdo. <laughs> and three, we got, um, Sonata and Kota Ibushi in the main event. So, uh, some good stuff for the G1 for New Japan. So that's your outside the WWE bubble <laughs> segment here on the podcast. And I'll admit, I well, I, I was I was up with the NXT stuff. So, um, and you know, I actually I I I like the t- I, and it's I, I'm torn on the the Champa stuff only because I am such a big Aleister Black fan, but I'm a big Champa fan too. So I um I'll admit I'm the only thing like you said like it's it's not like we always just sit here and like you know um I'm okay with the with the title change. I just I in a way wish that Gargano wasn't a part of it just because then i felt like you could have transitioned over that later on um then it would have felt less like a tra- not that it really matters but it would have felt less like a transitional champion reign for but at the same time i look at it this way though too um i think that you know history has now shown us in spades um especially by a big cd release this week that it really i mean what you do at nxt and championships in nxt doesn't mean success on raw and smackdown you know so i don't I think that just Aleister Black getting that title alone for me was, was, is okay. I, he's the type of character where I almost, you know, Josh, you know, dude, I, I talk about this a lot. I, I, a lot of times don't like my fa- favorite guys or, or characters, men or women that I'm, I'm more interested in. I like them away from the title because I feel like better stories can be told. Um, so I, I, in a way, kind of dig that they're taking him back out because I, he, especially his character, I feel like has a vibe that doesn't really need to be around the championship. There's, there's just this, um, there's just this allure to his, you know, he's, he's very, he's a very captivating character anyway. So he doesn't need, he doesn't, no, I'm not saying you don't want to accomplish championships, but I don't think you need to put a championship on him to make him interesting. Right. And you're right. And I, I, I take solace for getting to watch him win the title in person. That's awesome. Yeah, that that's awesome. Alistair Black's my favorite NFC guy, and I got to see that. So that's something that I I look back at coming out of this decision. Like, um, I don't know why people feel like you have to be this way or that way. It's okay to have a glass half full approach to things. I, I don't know. If, if something's really that horrible and that shitty, okay, then I understand. But I don't know. Like, even if there's stuff that I don't agree with, I can understand why this is happening and it's happening to lead into other things. Well, it, I always just look at it as, like, if it's something that either I wasn't expecting or maybe it's something I didn't was like, well, I didn't like how that went, but let's just see where they're taking it, you know? I'm right. always a let's see where they're taking it kind of guy just because – you never want to short yourself on a long payoff by being short-sighted. You know what I mean? Like we could all, 
you, you know, we could all be long sighted and be surprised by something short term, you know, cause then that's when a lot of stuff's like, wow, that was cool. You know, um, that's why it's, it's, you know, patience and, and, and playing the long game is, is always, is always better. And, 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 and for me, storytelling, I like that long term storytelling. I like the fact that, um, you know, we're, we're still kind of telling, you know, uh, a Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar story. You know, I still like that the, they could tie stuff in from from a couple of years ago. Like, you know, the Daniel Bryan Miz stuff is still going on. Um, you know, this is this is strategic storytelling that at times, you know, had fans thirsting for it. At times had fans just over it sometimes, you know, but it kept stringing us along to a point where they finally could tell the story. You know, and it's just, you know, um, I don't know, man. I mean, I just I, I think that that's we I, I feel like a lot of it is. Everybody feels that that you have to have the title of the best for validation, and that's that 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 goes to that's the problem with people in everyday life anymore. That's the problem with you know, and, and that's why I appreciated which we're going to talk about here in a minute, I'm sure. But um, the speech at the beginning of Raw when Triple H said, you know, there's something special about that locker room. You know, there's something that like that lot. This is the this is the most close knit locker room that we've had. You know, that means something, man, because that that shows that it's not. As much as we at home sit back like, yes, absolutely, you, you want to be in that main event. You want to earn your spot. It's just like any job that you're at. You want to be that top salesman or you want to be that top producer or you want to be – you know, you want to sell the most homes. You want to you, – whatever it is that, you're, that you do. But um, but you also know that you you know the team that you're working for also has to play into that as well. Like that that has to come first and you have to know – I I'm, you know, I just, pardon the, the pun here, but you do. You have to know your role and shut your mouth. You know, stay in your lane. And, and I, I feel like um, I, I feel like, you know, uh, when people get so in the mindset of, well, they have to be a champion in NXT, then they graduate. And then once you graduate, into and you know, it's it's almost like they see that as the progression, like you're a college football champion. So then after you're a college football champion, you go to the NFL and you win the Super Bowl. And, that you know, it's almost like video game um, mindset of, of just uh, like a fantasy driven world of how you you would want it to be if it was if you were fantasizing and uh, writing your own favorite athlete's story you know um i've always looked at it as i just I, I don't i don't think you know not everybody needs to hold every title you know it's it's supposed to be special when someone's a grand slam champion or, or when somebody's you know um and, and, but it's funny josh because this is where this is where we always like i, I think people talk out of both sides of their mouth because on one hand you get mad because people don't like when people play, uh, you know, they, they don't like when they play quote unquote hot potato with the championships. But then if somebody has a long title run, they don't like when that happens. But then right. if somebody's an actual transitional champion, they don't like that because it just felt transitional. And then, so no matter what, it just seems like if there's a title change, people for some reason don't, they'll find a reason for it not to be okay or, or, or the greatest thing ever. And then if it, it's just, it's, it's like, it's maddening anymore, you know? Um, I, and especially to see that every title in a way does have its own flair to it now with the people that are holding these championships. So, um, and, and that, and that absolutely goes the same with the NXT championship. And that's why I, as much as I don't like the fact that, uh, that Gargano kind of got involved and now it'll probably be a three way. And, you know, I understand why they did it and, and it's going to be a fun ride now seeing this, this feud, you know, culminate in, in Champa Gargano for the title, you know, which, which ultimately, you know, and did this, did this feud ever need it? Probably not. You know, it was, it, I always felt like this was above the championship anyway, but this is why you want to be above the championship, right? Is so that you could eventually wear that, that title. So, um, I, I, you know, regardless of how I feel about how they did it or when they did it or whatever, um, I think we, we all saw this coming. I just think that the surprise of it, Josh, let me ask this. Did it maybe take it away from you because it was spoiled by, it was, it was spoiled before we could see it live. Is that maybe, is, is that a, a, a problem maybe? Yeah. And I, this is trivial, but like I, in a way, like you have a guy win a title at the mania takeover, mm. but you don't even let him defend a title <laughs> at Brooklyn, which is like their like biggest show of the year. Like, I, I, it, it is triple and semantic, and like you, you made a great point about the whole thing because I was, <laughs> I was talking about that when I was on the uh, pipe bomb, and freaking Michelle was going all over the place about hot potatoes or Sh- Sasha and Charlotte, and me and B Rob were like, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> if anything, nah. it's keeping you on your toes because there actually there is importance to what's going on. Yeah, they're switching the titles, but you still care what's going on. It's well, not like. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Let, let me ask this though, Josh, because this is this is where I would say, you know, because the the argument back then was, well, this is just, you know, this never really happens. And then you look at the NBA the past four years. If Cleveland would have beat Golden State this past year, wouldn't they have been playing hot potato with the NBA championship? Yeah. Right? Because because I don't know, I don't watch basketball, but what, didn't it go Golden State, Cleveland, then Golden State, then Golden State, or was it Golden State, Golden State, Cleveland, Golden State? Golden State, Cleveland, Golden State, Golden State. Okay, okay. So if, if Cleveland would have won, obviously we're, we're speaking hypotheticals, but if Cleveland would have won this year, the past four years would have been Golden State, Cleveland, Golden State, Cleveland. Uh, they would have been playing hot potato with the NBA champ. It happens. It happens in boxing. It happens in, 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 in all forms of sport. So when, you're, when, you're, when your theater that reflects the excitement of sports – when you're not, you know what I mean? Like, I, I get it. It's, you know, people still want it to be sports, but it's entertainment and, and it's, it's sports entertainment. So it's theater that's based around the emotion of sport. So they're just telling real life stories. You know what I mean? Like, just like how they have dynasties and you're going to have your people running with the title for, you know, or Oscar streak or, or, or Lesnar streak or whomever streak, you know, um, I'm intentionally not mentioning names just so people can't say that I'm trying to bring people up. Um, I, I just think that I'm, I'm serious. I, I just think that I, I do think that we, we, as fans are just always, when it comes to championships, we're always talking out of both ends of our mouth and don't realize, um, in a way we're never happy with, you know, it's, and, and, and that's, that's true because we only want our favorites to hold the championships. And I'm, I'm not saying everybody, but that's the, the majority of the viewer. And when you're younger, I understand that. I, but I guess as you get older for me, at least now it's, it is, I, I think, problematic. Like, and I'm not going to say that I don't love when I see somebody finally earn their, their championships and stuff like that. I, that's, I'm not, those are great moments, and it's, it's that stuff that you feel great for these men and women. And that's, that's, I'm not saying any of those. But what I'm saying is that I don't, I don't, I'm never, you're never going to hear me on here, and it's not going to, it's never going to ruin my viewing experience of any wrestling promotion if my favorite wrestler doesn't have a title on them because it's, right. It's, it's the stories that they tell are what captivates me, you know? And, and I do, I, a lot of times, like, especially with Jericho's first run when he was undisputed champ, I remember thinking, man, I just, I, I, you get, you do get kind of painted into a little bit more of a box, you know? And, and it's hard to tell as many unique stories when you're champion, you know, especially when you're the main champion. Um, it, it's, you kind of have to stay in a pretty linear path. Um, they're not going to have, I don't think, like Randy Orton stalking Triple H's family or Triple H stalking Randy, you know, however, whoever was stalking who, whenever they were breaking yeah. through people's houses all the time, you know. Um, I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I guess that's where I get, I get, I get lost in the, the, you know, but that's the passion that you, that you want though, too, you know. So I don't want to say, I don't want to overplay and be like, oh, she don't pop for it, you know. But I, I guess like the days long arguments afterwards of like, that's where I just start to think like, it's still at the end of the day, just kind of like, employee of the month you know yeah, i mean it's in a way it's just like getting employee of the month it's your, it, it's your on a much grander scale i know guys just it's a fucking joke so before anybody gets their wannabe podcaster uh underwear in, in a bunch hey and i, I just want to make it clear i wasn't bad last night <laughs> like it was a great match <laughs> it, it was a really really good match and i i'm happy for champa champa's been really doing a phenomenal job as a performer in, in the skill role, he, he's, he's been killing it. chopper has been killing it. So I wasn't mad. He didn't affect my night. I had a good time transcribing the match. I just wanted to make the point where, like, even though my guy lost and maybe I didn't just, uh, agree with the decision, I wanted to show everybody that it's not the end of the world for me. And I was, like, soon piss off because I wasn't. I wasn't even mad. <laughs> so yeah. that's what I just wanted to let you guys know. Yeah, and and, it, and I just really said that because I know there's a lot of people that like they they do just go ape shit with every single like title change, and it's like guys just and it ends up ruining an entire show for for a lot of people. Like you you're you got, I I I guess now that I'm now that I'm nearing forty and I'm getting you know a couple more gray hairs in my beard than I'm like. Um, you know, it's just, I guess I just, a lot of times I'm just trying to like come on and say, guys, it, it ain't that bad, you know, cause I do feel like a lot of your wrestling, you know, if you don't like what's going on, it's so a lot of it's self-inflicted. You're, you're, you're being self-destructive on your own viewership because you're, you're allowing one thing that's like in the grand scheme of a year, of a year long story from WrestleMania to WrestleMania, whatever WWE decides to do every month, we'll find one trivial fucking thing that everybody wants to just 
you know, it has to separate the entire wrestling Twitter bubble. And that's, that's the talking point. And then we totally forget about it the next month when something else comes along. It's, it, it, it is like a two year old with a shiny object and WWE treats us as such. And, and they should because it's easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're laughing at this moment right now. <laughs> but oh, so hard. Yeah. <laughs> so. We're going to save uh, some of that talk for later on uh, in, in the Nimrod Summer segment of the show. But let's get to WWE Evolution. Big announcement to start off this week's Monday Night Raw, October 28th, Sunday, during uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Day after my uh, birthday. After Good pick up on the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, too, brother. Thank yes. you. And uh, very fitting end for that month as well. And it's going to be a pay-per-view. I'm excited to cover it uh, just from a transcribed standpoint because these women have been kicking ass match-wise. So for me, for them to actually have a, a bigger pay-per-view, even with more time than they would get on a regular WWE uh, pay-per-view or NXT TakeOver, I think that's awesome. I don't know what the card is. Honestly, I don't give a shit what the card is. <laughs> I'm just happy the show's actually taking place. And Patience is a virtue. Uh, we've gone through a long road of uh, where we are today. You know, growing up, I had Sable's hands printed on her breasts, and that was the entertainment you got for the women at that time when I was a kid. Then we'd gone through pudding matches and Playboy pillow fight matches that I saw at WrestleMania. So where we are right now is, is very, very cool from an evolution standpoint. As a guy who's always appreciated in ring content, I think it's very cool because it's a validation to what these women have put into their work as performers. And while people get so fucking gung ho about talking segments and storylines, I think what's important when they deliver in the ring, that's the tour, that's the real story that has to be told, not on the mic. <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy. This is long overdue, uh, you know, they didn't waste any time getting into that segment. They just went right in the nail the head, having Vince in there in the ring, introduces Triple H and Stephanie. And let me just say this before we get to Adam Sauce, because I, this is something that really bothers me. And while I understand where people are coming from, that doesn't mean I have to agree with you. We need to stop getting on our fucking high horse about, oh, this is just, this is another uh, case of Stephanie McMahon putting herself over. In any entertainment form, in any decision that fall, involves product, yes, in a way, there is a PR stunt that comes behind it. But you you don't feel that Stephanie wanted this to happen? Oh, I just woke up the next day. Oh, how can we come up with some good PR? How we can get ratings this week? Oh, listen, that's the evolution pay you. You don't think she's been wanting to do it for the last three or four years since we've been making this new wave of women's wrestling in the WWE, we don't think that she wanted that to happen. You don't think that she's in spearheading that? Look, I love Triple H. Triple H is the man. Triple H has done a lot of great stuff for the women, especially from the NXT side. But don't think it's just him, the only person in the company that cares about women's wrestling. How about Finley, the guy that's produced the majority of the women's matches for over 15 years. Think about that. I, I get it. There's a lot of the dirt sheet bubble journalists out there who have this freaking gung-ho narrative about Stephanie McMahon and how horrible of a person she is. Look, to each his own, but... Why, but why, why, why is she a horrible person? That's one thing I've never understood. I've, I've always That's thought that Stephanie the, McMahon was like... Because the look, whole China stuff. That that's why they ripped them. But but hold on. But d- who really knows the story? You know what I mean. This this is what drives me nuts about that. Is like who ultimately really knows? Like I know we heard what Triple H said on 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 Stone Cold's podcast. I understand that. But uh, you don't under like that's what WWE chooses to tell us does not mean that's what is talked about in the boardroom. That's just and, and that's what what, what that's. Where it's beginning and the end, period, done, end of it. Yeah. And guys, we're not, we need to stop acting like we live in boardrooms because we're not. We're fans. <laughs> you know, I, I cover these shows. I don't understand why this happens. I don't know why this happens for this performer that poor. And honestly, I don't care. I don't care. As long as they're on my TV and they have a way to entertain me, that's what I care about. 
when I go to a wrestling show live in person, I, the last thing on my mind, and I know this is a shock to other people, but booking is not on my brain threshold when I'm watching a wrestling show live. I'm sorry. It, it hasn't been since I've been watching it since the Attitude Era. It wasn't even my friend thought once the dirt sheets got even bigger during the mid-2000s or that worse since the Gresham Era. I never gave a fuck about booking. I, I'm sorry. But, you know, we're, we're going to have this evolution show, right? But and here, and here's what really defines the bubble in 2018. It doesn't matter if you have an all women show or a, a cruiserweight show or an all indie spot fest show like NXT takeovers. We always have to go back to creative. And it's not about whether the shows are good or not. It's not whether or not the matches are good or not. But it's, it's all about a fucking ego justifying contest of whether or not our fantasy booking is right. You're mm-hmm. not in the boardrooms, you're not responsible for the show, and you're not responsible for what the company does. Every company, TNA, Lucha Underground, New Japan Pro Wrestling, WWE has their own logic, and they are responsible, and it, they have creative liberty to do whatever the fuck they want, whether you like it or not. Well, and like, like Josh, you said, you said, you know, like timing and do timing is everything. So, and I'm just, you know, I, and I don't, again, I don't know, but these are, these were my assumptions and listen, you know, you know what it's like to assume, but, um, number one, I mean, I, I didn't even realize it until Sam brought it up like last night. She was like, why would they even have it in October? And, and I was just laughing. I was like, who cares? It's our birthday week. It's what she went, Oh, save the tatas. And I was like, that's right. It's, you know, Susan, you know, Susan cover month and all that stuff. So. So, you know, it absolutely makes perfect sense that way. Um, number two, you know, they keep stressing this is superstars from the past, present, and future. When's the May Young Classic? It's September. Oh, okay. Oh, they're taping in September, but the finals is going to be on that show. Oh, so we see where timing is everything. And then typically, not all the time, but uh, sometimes – you write three month storylines if you're doing short term stuff. Um, we're announcing a pay per view in July, or in July we're announcing a pay per view for October. So let's do the math. Septem- uh, let's see where we go in July to August to September to October. Wow, three months! It's amazing. So guys, if you know anything about marketing, if you know anything about merchandise, if you know anything about just just the way that things have to be printed, pressed, made. Uh, I mean, you already have the Bella Twins going on, um, on like, uh, uh, talk shows and stuff like that, talking yeah. about, yeah, yeah, they were on Fallon or something like that, you know, talking about whatever. So th- th- there's a reason why they, they're they talking about this early. It's because, you know, to all the men out there that are, that are you know, angry about this one, just like they were angry about like Titus O'Neil and, and New Day and, you know, and everybody that, that was really affected by, you know, uh, Hulk Hogan's antics, um, it's, it's funny listening to a bunch of men talk about what they don't want on something that ultimately is for somebody like my daughter. You know, this show, what we forget, again, we forget that we're watching a show that is, it's a variety show that is geared, to, mainly geared towards children with adult overtones. Um, it's Saturday Night Live for children, but you know, like like how Pee Wee's Playhouse used to be. And so my dad, I, I know, like in hindsight, my dad used to blaze and just watch Pee Wee's Playhouse with me, and that's why he watched it. I, I totally know that now in hindsight. Um, but I, I just think that it's it's one of these scenarios, Josh, where um, you know, I, I uh, a lot of what what I think that you're going to hear from people is um about about this pay-per-view from from the male side is um you know well i don't i don't want to watch this because you know i watch because i i i like want to be like you know you watch the characters that you want to be like you want to be these like men you know i'm fucking 38 years old i'm gonna be 39 before this evolution pay-per-view what kind of fucking sociopath am i that like i want to be somebody else other than myself with my beautiful wife and beautiful daughter. You know what I mean? Like I do not want to be any of these wrestlers that, that have, I've ever like, you know, watched or appreciate or idolized, you know, Hey, I mean, do you mimic shit that they do and stuff like that? Absolutely. Do I sit there and go, Oh, I just, I really wish I could be this guy. No people that skin people and wear their skin do that. That's fucking freak show shit. You know, 
<laughs> now, when you're a kid, though, it's different. When you're a kid, you look, you do see yourself. You look at these as heroes. You look at them. You look up at them and say that that's that's who I want to be when I get older. And that, you know, so that's why you know, as much as the internet, you want to hate Roman Reigns. That's why Roman Reigns does have such a giant following with kids. Um, that's why this movement is great for you know for women and men because it's not only going to show that women can hang with men and, and and this is entertainment guys and it doesn't matter we could go we could go sports too right now I would say tennis is better on the women's side than the men's side uh, women's soccer in the United States is su- far superior than the men and they're not pay- they're not paid anywhere near as enough. Uh, they're not even, they're not paid equal. The men's team can't even make one of the most exciting World Cups ever. Uh, the women are, are like the Soviet hockey team from like the 70s and 80s. You know what I mean? Like teams like fear us. Like, and it's, it's, it's one of those where it, it, I, 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 Josh feel like it comes down to like, it's, it's one of a couple different things here, you know, because you also hear, well, men don't watch soap operas. We want to watch men like, we want to watch men fight. So, okay. So you're, if you're not watching for the stories, if you're an adult who still wants to be these characters, that's maybe – listen, I, I go to a therapist. It's cool. Maybe you should too. Um, if, if, if it's not either of those things and you don't want to watch the women in the match and it's because you don't connect with the characters and you don't understand the storylines because I know it's so crazy that like, you know, it's, it's – it would be like it would be like SNL having like an all women's night. It's not really that str- much of a stretch. It would be fantastic, by the way. Um, it sounds like it's just a bunch of dudes that like watching other dudes wrestle around greased up in their underwear, which is okay, dude. It's it's I, it's okay. It's 2018. You we all have our things. We all wave our freak flag, and it's, we, we're proud to be who we are. But maybe we should just admit that, you know, because if if you if you love professional wrestling. If you love the storytelling that goes along with professional wrestling, there is no difference between the men's division and the women's division with the exception of the competitors. We're seeing first from the women's division because there's something Maurice said the other night that was right. And I think this might this is the greatest quote that might have went over everyone's head. But she said – and she said it in, and I know how she said it sarcastically but in a way. But she said, you know, let, let's be real. The, the women's revolution started with me and she's not wrong because when she was the longest reigning divas champion and that division became a joke, that's when the whole like bathroom break match joke started. And it was like, you know, and, and I'm mean, not that they were always there, but that's when I hit a fever pitch of like, wait a minute, this is, this is insulting to these women. Like we want a women's division, like how TNA had their knockouts division, you know, and granted it did take, you know, uh, uh like, in, like, you have to give her credit. It took AJ Lee to finally stand up to people. And, and, you know, and I think that's a lot of it too, Josh. I think a lot of people like to play AJ versus Steph and they like to play that hand. And that's, that needs to stop too. That, that, that's who cares at this point. Who's, who really like started this you know evolution well, we're getting. I, I and, and I, I think that there's more of a fear that women are starting to draw more than men, you know, cause that was, that was always the thing growing up. It's always all oh, women, women want to replace us. Newsflash to, to everyone else out there. there. you know, Women give birth. I don't know if any of you have ever witnessed a birth, like a live birth. Um, there's not a man listening to this that would be able – that we, would, we wouldn't make it through it. We, uh, just, just trust me when I tell you. And all the fathers out there know exactly what I'm talking about because that would be like saying, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to – I know this sounds r- rough, but – the miracle and magic of life, and you are the men. You are the only men that can. You're the only human beings can do it. Are men, and what's going to happen is this baby, this like eight pound thing, is going to grow in you for like nine months. You're going to feel real fucked up for a while and puke all over the time, and then it's going to come out that little hole. It's a it's a tip of your, it's a tip of your thing, you know. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut that bad boy open. So that the baby can come out, you push that bad boy out, and then we're gonna sew you back up. Think about this: childbirth is not now, and, and not only that is let's let's give women their due too for not only being tougher than men, but again, 
uh, there would be no life without women. Say what you want, guys. All we do is we fight, we shoot a bunch of uh, a bunch of soldiers that don't even know where they're going. They're licking windows the entire way out there, hoping they hit an egg by the final, time, time they hit the bullseye. By the time they get there, I lost millions and millions and millions of soldiers over the years. Trust me, I, there was only one motherfucker that ended up like making the destination, and it probably wasn't on my end. I just have an awesome life. So. That's a great way to explain how, how babies are made, right? Okay, I, I thought so. So anyway, um, th- the other argument that I have, like, the, and this is this is again, this is the the thing. So so, the, but that the, what are, the point I was trying to make was to say that well, women women aren't tough, or women can't do competitive sports, or women that, women are tougher than men will ever be. What what a woman has to go through in her life versus what a man has to go through in his life, and I'm not trying to like I'm, I'm just trying to call it like it is, you know. And men are going to be out there going, oh, what a pussy, what you know. Well, I'll say this, I'll take it back to the '90s if you want to be non PC. You sound like a bunch of pussy ass motherfuckers, is what y'all sound like. Y'all sound like y'all want to talk about your balls, but you forgot about your cock because you ain't got one. All balls, no dick. That's the problem. That's the problem with men these days. You're all balls, no dick. What that means is you're all talk, no action. We should be supporting these women, celebrating these women. We th- this is to to all this is showing. If you're sitting there going, well, it's going to be a three hour bathroom break match, or well, we don't want to watch. Who wants to watch women? What you're saying is, I am afraid a woman is taking my place, or what you're saying is, I am ashamed that a woman is doing what I always dreamt to, I could do, but I couldn't. It's funny that all these podcasters, Josh, listen, myself included, you know, some of us are ex, ex athletes, ex, you know, I play college baseball, the other people play college, whatever. And we sit here and we're like, we're athletes. And I know doesn't mean shit. These women are still better athletes than any of us that are talking into a stupid fucking microphone will ever dream to be. And I think there's just a lot of jealousy when it comes with that. I think it's, or there's a lot of jealousy of women are doing what a lot of us couldn't do or didn't try to do it, you know, and these women did, they went for it and they changed the game. And what kills me though is Josh, and, and the, this is my last point on this, is the argument of no, we watch sports. It's a, it's not entertainment. It's, it's it's not a soap opera. It's 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 um um. Listen, it is absolutely a soap opera. It's a live action comic book. Like, because this is what I know, man. They, they, like, we have to stop this shit because, like, like. Like it's it's like, like we watch athletic competitions that are based around trash talking, unrealistic characters, and science fiction stories, right? I, that, that's what wrestling is, realistically. Like like normal sports. Like think about this. Like you know, like with two dudes going to the octagon. Um, two dudes going to the octagon. One dude says, "Yo, man, I just want you to know, your kid's my kid. I know you think he's his uncle. You think oh, you, everyone thinks I'm his uncle, but that's really my kid. Hey, bring your kid in the ring. I'm gonna tell him." And while I tell him, I'm going to be wearing a shirt that says I'm your poppy. And while I'm wearing a shirt that says I'm your poppy and I'm telling you that this is my kid, even though you thought I was his uncle, and I'm going to start telling you about all these family history, we're going to totally ignore the fact that the dude that's really the father of this kid is dressed up like a masked Riddler without any riddles at all. It's just the dude sitting there with a bunch of question marks all over him. We're going to ignore all of this in the octagon because we watch it for the fighting. Shut like shut the fuck up. Like we we sound so ridiculous at times. And and I bring that up because like think like think about how like the, the storylines when you look at in the past, like that was a twisted storyline, right? But we we get into it. We're like, oh, but so are we living vicarious? So what you're saying when you say I can't connect to the women characters because I can't connect to their storylines. So are you saying you you're a home wrecker? Are you saying what you're what you are trying to you know what I mean? Like it's it's just it, like everything that all the arguments against this paper that I've heard to me sound like insecure men digging for reasons to basically discriminate against women. Just like I talked about last week, Josh, I find it, and, and this is I think part of the reason why my, why my wife totally just it, she's wiping out her Twitter like totally, and she's totally getting on social media. Um, she just had enough of all the bullshit of like basically dudes trying to trying to muscle up women online all the time. And it's it's a horrible thing that's going on, and it's really because in this country right now, um, men are just insecure, just insecure beings. And that's the bottom line. Because it, 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 at this rate in 2018, if you're not supportive of not only the inclusion of 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 men, women, uh, transgender, like no I don't I don't fucking care. If you're not down with like this, this how how diverse the, the locker room is with WWE right now, and how 
put together they are. And you can tell like the support that they have for one another. And like, you truly can, Josh. Like you, like you can see it Monday night. Like you could, like you could feel the, I had fucking chills during that speech, man. Like hearing Triple H choke up and like everything. Like it, it was, it was giving me fucking chills, man. Uh, I thought it was just a, a beautiful thing all around. And, and for people to be tossing shade at this, um, is it's ultimately more professional jealousy and, and jealousy that, that women are doing what some men simply, simply cannot do. And instead of looking at that as it's about goddamn time, we have pricks out there that are saying, well, I'm going to take this back to the fifties. That's why I voted Trump. And that's, that's ultimately what it is. It's just loud mouth, insecure pricks that aren't supportive. Um, this to me is groundbreaking. It, it's not, I mean, it's not like, and it's, that's the thing. It's not like it's even groundbreaking. Other companies have done stuff like this. Stardom is, I mean, there's all stardom shimmer, right? You know, there's, there's women's promotions out there. It's not like this is a new concept, but it, it is big when it's the biggest wrestling company when it's the biggest entertainment you know when it comes to the sports entertainment company out there when you're when it's a company that's sharing at 85 dollars per share you know or it's, it's sitting at 85 dollars per share it's because of this inclusion hate on it all you want this is best for business and it is best for business it puts butts in seats it sells merchandise sam actually brought this up look at how many men are wearing women's t-shirts in the crowd it's incredible man but people want to live and die on Hogan's Rock, you know? So, I don't know. So you have your Hogan boys? Because Ho- I've noticed the Hogan boys are the same boys that are anti the women's, that are the anti women's, this all, all women's pay per view. I'm trying to figure out a way to get up there. It's like a birthday gift. Like, like the Steelers play the Raiders on my daughter's birthday. This is the day after my birthday. My daughter and I are trying to like switch birthdays this year so that we can celebrate. Like I take her to like this and we'll go out to Oakland for the Raider Steeler game. Shit, you know, as a Raider, as Raider fans, not Steeler fans, don't get ideas out there. Um, I don't know, but that's, that's just where I'm at, man. Like, you know, it's, I, I just think that like, it's, we sit here and we treat wrestling like it's this sport that we learned in high school and like it's a varsity sport. It's no, it's, it's, it's soap opera. It's Broadway. It's, it's, it is, it's Broadway. It's theater. Understand we're watching theater and understand that there, when it comes to theater, there is no, just like comedy, just like, and you know, cause that was the thing for the longest time. Women can't be funny. Women don't know stand up. And ultimately it's cause you're afraid. You're afraid to have the inclusion of women because when women start main eventing pay-per-views, when women are drawing better than men, like Ronda Rousey was in UFC, it looks shitty on women, on men, doesn't it? And it shouldn't. That's the that's the fucked up stigma, Josh. Is it, it should never be a, a, a knock on men. It's an unrealistic thing of men have to be. It's it's that knuckle dragging, fucking stupid, like like that, like that 1950s caveman type of fucking thinking. That's all. That's all. It's, and it's, it's sad that there's still that pushback in, 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 in today's day and age. Um, but at the same time, it's not surprising. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be having these Twitter battles like people constantly have and shit like that. Like, you know, so. It's also the same audience. Not, not, not the same audience. I, I, I phrase it a lot. This is the same bubble that rushes to promote, uh, leak new, uh, new photo pictures of the, of the female performers. But feel some type of way once they're getting main event slots on a pay per view because they're just pigs. They're not showing as pigs. Yeah, or, or three or four matches on a pay per view. You know, <laughs> like, like like we don't have enough more men on every fucking entertainment platform or sports or anything in life. <laughs> men, 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 men. I I love that it's it always has to be men, especially when it comes to, to women in this country in in, in America. It always has to be men speaking for women. Like, and I feel bad, like, it's just me and you sitting here talking. Like, this is one episode where I wish Sam was here so she could have her voice, you know, because this is, this is the topic that she brought up a good point the other night. Like, I, I you know, and, and this is where I want to bring her into it. Um, she, she was like, she, and we, we talked about it and like, she kind of, I don't want to say she changed her tune, but she was like, you know what? No, I get it. But it, for her first thing was, I, I'm tired of them using women. She was like, I just feel like now they're just using women as like, what's the first for this, first for that. And then once we started laying it out and when she started thinking about it, she's like, okay, yeah, you're right. And, and it was, but it was more of her kind of like, it was salty dog syndrome. You know what I mean? It's just, we get salty dog syndrome. We're going to find any way to, to, to criticize or whatever. And then she just, you know, once she warmed up that she's like, all right, yeah, you're right. And you know, it's just one of those where it's, I, I, I don't think we thought we were going to see it this quick. And, and that was Sam's thing was like, you know, it's just, everything's happening so fast and the mar- but the market's demanding it. And I, and I think that's the, that's the biggest thing that I think people have to take a step back and like, whatever your personal feelings are aside, if the market is demanding it, when you're a publicly traded company, you do what the market is demanding. 
So. And, and I think the company is trying to evolve with how things are going with uh, equality and uh, with this new deal on Fox, maybe uh, the contracts uh, are kind of different in skill wise for the female performers. I think that'll happen. And especially, as you mentioned earlier, Steffi, uh, and we were talking about this before we came on air, uh, a lot of Stephanie could be uh, showing her future business plan once Vince uh, steps down and stuff, you know? Uh, I, I think the, the only way we keep going is going higher. The thing that bothers me is while people act like the company just stays complacent and doesn't try to grow, we as an audience show our true colors because I, I don't want to feel this way, but I see trends and yeah, we're, I'm fucking pumped that we're having this pay per view, but there's another part of me where I feel like we're gonna have fucking uh, irrelevant chance in beach falls Absolutely. during a match where it's, it, just because it wasn't the match they wanted to see on that particular show, they're just going to crap on it. It doesn't matter if it's a female show or all men show. We're, we're just going to business in ourselves. And that's what bothers me. And it also bothers me seeing people rip women on Twitter most of the time. And, and not every female wrestling fan is watching wrestling just because, oh, they like the look of a certain performer. Like, every time somebody tries to bring down Roman Reigns, it's like, oh, Roman Reigns only draws to female performers because of his looks and his hair. Is it? Is that the case most of the time? I, I don't ride the fence of gay or whatever. I have no issues to help. My sister's lesbian. I have no issues with the gay community. So the, the, my point is, yeah, Roman Reigns is a good-looking person, but maybe the females like him for his Wait. character and what he does in the ring. Wait, how so, about this? So just to use that logic, not to interrupt Josh, but this is a good point. Just, so with that logic, with my daughter being a lesbian, and and you know, and listen, she has a, she has a couple little crushes in on, on the on the women's division. I'm not going to lie, and I'm not going to say who they are, but but at the same time, she also like again, she's an eight year old girl. She sees herself, you know, she looks at these women as his heroes, his role models. So so, but with her, so which is it? Is she watching because she sees them as role models, or is she watching them because she thinks a couple, you know, a couple of women are, are hot and cute? Which is it? Or is, or could it be both? Why can't it just be both? You know what I mean? Like why, why, why? I don't understand why it can't be both. Because ultimately, that's what it should be. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. That. I mean, that's just a, it's just something to toss in there. I hate that it always has to go back to well, it has to look. It, it goes on the looks. Not not always. Not always. I feel like with characters like you know like Mandy Rose, they abs- they want you they want you to think of her character that way. Bobby Roode, I, I guess, with even the whole glorious thing. That's that's more of right. Isn't that what they're going for? It's like Rick Rude in a way, kind of ish, right? Finn Balor with the John Travolta jacket and abs. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, the Balor Club is an all male review that is inclusive to everybody, but it's an all male <laughs> review, and and Finn is just he's the leader, and when he comes out, the place goes crazy. Oh man! And, and listen, I'm not gonna lie, my, my his the past couple pay reviews we've we've had seats on the side where Balor does his little thing when he gets on the ropes and shows off his abs and everything and every time my i just look at my wife just melting in her seat like all right dude i fucking lose again <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's something wrong having it uh both ways i i oh. i just look my issues i don't want this show to be another example of all oh, male insecure guys with no balls trying to get their shit in because oh they did a fantasy book to show the way I wanted to. It's not about you. <laughs> well, and you know what? I, I think with this crowd, it'll be like like oh, most crowds. How's this shit going on? Well, <laughs> no, I think this this crowd though will be like a lot of crowds that that for special for especially the extra special events that the crowd that's going to be there. The the douchebag that's tossing out the male chauvinistic slurs and this and that or whatever, like they're 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 not gonna pay the money to go. And if they are, they're just they're showing not only how petty, but how just truly contrarian they're trying to be. Um I I think that the crowd that's gonna be there is going to absolutely be there to support the women. I will I'm not gonna lie though, I brought this up to Sam the other day, just because I know um uh Caitlin, you know, they said that they're bringing her back for the May Young Classic and you know, I, I would, who knows if she's going to be there or not. And just because I, you know, you like to, you always like to get the gears going. I said to Sam, so do you think, you know, AJ Lee would come back for just one show, just knowing that Caitlin's there, it's like a security blanket. So, you know, it's, it's just for a one show, one off kind. It's not like she doesn't have the beef that punk has, you know, it's, and Sam brought up a good point, man. 
she was like, you know what? She was like, why would she come back? Just have the entire crowd chant CM Punk at her. Right. And I was like, holy shit, you talk about pipe bombs. You just dropped a pipe bomb on me. Like that, that's okay. a, and that's a hell of a point, man. Like, you know, like and we, ru- we ruin our own, we ruin ourselves. Like we can't have nice things sometimes because we, as fans, we ruin it. You know, like I wouldn't, I would, I didn't think about that. Like I would have just thought, hell yeah, the crowd would pop. Like it's the one thing with the rumble. Everybody was talking about how cool it would have been, you know, but I just, I always forget that, that you run the risk because just we can't. And that's where it's like, guys, fucking, let's stop with the CM Punk shit and get over it. And just, cause that would, that ultimately could be ruining, like maybe risking a, a great moment for us. You remember when they made event the pay-per-view, but the entire conversation was about Ronda Rousey and how this is Stephanie pumping her ego in this then a PR cert where they're tossing to the women to the side. That wasn't true. Nope. Are we having this pay-per-view? If we're having the women made a better Royal Rumble, a big four show, by the way, you don't think the women are going to have a big spotlight on SummerSlam this year? <laughs> Isn't that women's Royal Rumble, and, you know, we were talking about this with, with Eric, too, so shout out, you know, shout out to Yui if you're listening out there. Um, but, I, you know, I infer, I'm actually amazed that people said that they didn't like the women's Rumble. You know, because, again, I'm not, I don't, I didn't, I, I, I got so bored with even trying to, like, Dude, I even shut my that that other the picky vice handle down because my one boy wasn't into it and like like I said, me and Sam I think are just like we're both so just fucking frustrated with like social media where it's like whatever. So um, I'm not saying like yeah, listen, try to add me. Go, you know, if, if I know you, I'll you know I'll add you and like we'll have fun. But I, I'm not dealing with like riff raff like the outside noise anymore. And um, just really, it's just it's it's more the same, man. It's just it's it's just more the same. This is just reasons for people to. Because they're miserable in their in their lives, they have to find reasons to complain and make sure and and or cater or or play a character and cater towards um, a base that they've built by by playing a character and and that's all that's all that it is. I mean, I, I truly believe there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, podcasters out there or people on the internet that they don't they don't truly believe what they're saying and 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 I've I've been saying that for years, man. I've said that for years and I, they know that they know that they have a base to, to cater to just like anybody else in entertainment. Look at our president and you play the hits. And when you play the hits, you, you play that there's a, there's still that part, that part of this population that I don't know how, what the percentage is that, that it's, it's funny how much like roid guy, like, like roid bro guy and hillbilly white trash are like one in the same. Because they all think that like women don't deserve to be wrestling in that ring. This is wrestling. Women shouldn't be in a wrestling ring. That's for men. Women, women. Oh, in my day, women just walked down to the ring with the men. Because it's a men's sport and it's a sport, god damn it. When I used to watch it, it was it's not like this Vince McMahon storybook storytelling shit bullshit today. I'm gonna tell you what it used to be. What it used to be was that back then just it was real sport. It was real men. Like and I and I'm I'm sorry that I'm I'm trying to lay on like a like what a, a degenerate fucking like Beaver County Pittsburgh or like well outside of Pittsburgh, Beaver County person sounds like, but that's the best I could do without like really on that. But that, that's ultimately the mindset, Josh. That is. That's a mindset behind weightlifter bro and white trash dude. And they're one in the same. And they're all and it's just they're they're all in that same camp of we don't want women to succeed in this society. Yeah. Um the show's happening on October 28th. We'll keep you guys posted uh, as far as, like, any new performers coming on the show. I, like I mentioned... I can't wait for this! <laughs> as I mentioned at the start of the segment, I, I really don't care what the card is. All we at know all. right now is going to be the Raw, SmackDown, NXT Women titles on the line, and the uh, finals of the May Young Classic. There's been some scuttlebutt on Twitter about a new tag team title division for the brands. I don't know if that'll happen. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it, but um, I I always brought this up, especially with the women getting more time on Raw these days. There's nothing wrong with having a women's television uh, championship. Mm-hmm. This is a little idea out there. Something you guys could ponder on that. Uh, but I'm very excited for the show. Adam's pumped for the show. Hopefully you guys are pumped for this show. Uh, we're going to be talking are, a lot about it over the next couple months. So learn to love it, baby. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Cause I'm going to be, I'm going to be hyped up for this. Unfortunately on YouTube, there are shows with the, uh, Roid guy and white trash, but <laughs> that's the, um, go make wrap- my burrito. I'm pickle yeah. Rick. 
<laughs> uh, before we wrap up the show this week, um, I wanted to mention some stuff that caught my eye, for, uh, caught my eye from the week of the shows. Um, first off, <laughs> um, the B team are <laughs> killing me, man. Their backstage interviews. Uh, <laughs> they did this try to find ways to uh, hang out with Roman and celebrate with him. Even to the point Roman put on Twitter today, they had, he had a little exchange with Carl Anderson. He's like, so we had these two guys to the good bus, which I was pretty funny. So That's cool. <laughs> shout, yeah. shout out to the B team. <laughs> There's been some people that their Twitter game has been strong lately. Um, I forget who. Well, well Roman and Roma, Roman and Tim Tonka going back and forth. It was pretty, it was pretty cool. That, that was some good shit. Uh, well, what else? Uh, again, Miz being Miz, you know, they had the whole thread of the show. He comes out in the limousine, the star show, they're walking the red carpet in the middle of the show. He uses a, a fake baby as a decoy to attack Daniel Bryan. Miz is just killing it on all cylinders. I have yet to see, uh, Miz and Mrs. yet. I feel bad about that. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I heard it was really good. And congrats to him and Maurice for uh, getting to have their own show like that. I think that's really cool. Uh, other stuff, wise wrestling wise, uh, really dig the four way match they had on 205 Wide this week: Mustafa Ali, Drew Gulak, Kadeo Tommy, and T.J. Perkins. Very, very good match. Uh, Drew Gulak won the match, so it looks like him and Cedric Alexander are going to fight each other at SummerSlam this year. And then, um, you know, next week we'll be able to spend some more time uh, talking about the SummerSlam storylines. Uh, they weren't wasting time this week. Uh, they were announcing a lot of matches here and there throughout both shows this week on Raw SmackDown. And then lastly, I want to give I want to give props to Randy Orton. Uh, just going through the juggler on SmackDown. You know, just saying what he needs to be addressed. What you feel, what he said was right or wrong. He addressed what people feel about him. And you know, <laughs> he didn't. He never mentioned anything after that whole dive thing he did a couple years ago on Twitter. Like he was ripping the whole, people jumping off the turnbuckles. Now he's mentioned it in the promo now. So I've been waiting to see what Randy Orton's actions were because he came back and he attacked Jeff Hardy. So I'm glad, I'm glad they. From a television writing point, they got to the juggler because on the end of last week's SmackDown, Ray was digging his fucking earlobe last week. Yeah, that was then, weird. Yeah, and then we understand why he was going after him. So I, I thought that was a good promo. Well, it, here's it, I, here's the thing. I actually I the I'll admit, and it's it sucks because I, I used to be such a big Wharton fan, and it's not anything against like I just feel like it, listen, it, it was it was an effective promo, absolutely, but it's like. We've heard this before from a lot of people, you know what I mean? And it's it's it almost sounded verb, and I hate to say this, but Rip Orton's so good in the ring, but so boring as a character, it came off boring. It came off more like a well, I don't like the fans, so what I'm gonna do? It sounds like um, ba -dum, ba -dum. It sounds like the most effective aloof person ever. Now, again, I stress effective. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, I don't, you know, I, I, but no, I, I do at least, you always do need that guy though, to kind of dig into the, dig into the internet, dig into, to that fan base. And you know what? Orton's been around for so long that, um, I would like to say that maybe Randy Orton should take credit for the Divas revolution because in Pittsburgh, the same fucking pay-per-view, you guys all want to fucking criticize us for popping for Roman Reigns for when he was the best out of the, the, the three P the people that were left. Um, and I was still booing Reigns, so don't come after me with that. But during Cena, Cena and uh, uh, Randy Orton that night, we were chanting, "We want divas," to the point that Randy Orton actually did his his the Randy Orton pose mid match to the tune of us chanting, "We want divas," and that was January 2014. So. I guess here's where I, what I would say, and, and to, to Randy Orton's thing, that's just a joke on, on Orton. I'm saying that he's just, you know, whatever. So it's, um, I do like what they're doing with Orton. Um, I'm just kind of over Orton at this point, he, you know. Um, it's funny how he was like, I'm not one of those guys that just goes away. Yeah, you are. You just had a fucking vacation, like a two, three month vacation, something like that. Like you've been gone. So it's whatever. But anyway, um, not, that's, you know, we're, we're picking, we're, now we're just nitpicking stuff. But, um, but no, I, I, I like the, I like the Orton stuff. Um, I, it's it just, I, I guess I'm just, I don't know, ready to move on from Orton. Um, what I did like a couple things I got, uh, the bars shirts and yeah. styles shirts. 
uh, fucking fantastic. The bar shirt was so smooth. Them, so- them soccer football shirts they had on, um, amazing. Uh, I and really the other thing is that I think uh, that I wanted to kind of, um, I guess my like final thought was. You know, with everything that we talk about with wrestling and, you know, we, 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 we always look for the good story, the feel good story. And we always look for like, you know, the person that always wanted to become the wrestling, you know, the, the wrestling fan that always wanted to be the wrestler. And you know, we always, we, we tread through all these stories and we always, ha- we all have our favorites or the people, whatever that like we pull for the past heroes, whatever. And a lot of times, like really, really authentic, good stories fall through the cracks because number one, the character doesn't want you. You know, it's not the character never looks for sympathy. The character is 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 typically a heel character. Um, but there's I, again, I think there's a lot of professional jealousy sometimes with certain people. And um, so, I guess my final thought is, I I'm so happy for Mike Mizan, the Miz, um, the, just a human being. Mike Mizan, like, you know, and, and, and the Miz himself, like, I just, you know, just for, for what it's worth, whatever. I mean, this, this is a guy that just kind of like on a whim on the real world was just trying to like, kind of get something going, you know, and just ended up living out his, you know, his goals, his dreams. And like the pushback that he initially got to like where he's at now. And he has his own spinoff show that I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to watch. Um, I'm going to watch his show with, with Maurice. Sam and I already talked about it. It's already on the recording list. So we missed it the other night, but it was one of those we were both like, shit, we really wanted to watch it. So it's, and you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy for the dude. He, he's not a guy that we ever would have, I think, seen. I, I, I don't know if we, any of us saw the Miz getting to where he's at right now, but it, it's good to see that he is um, finally getting the credit that he probably deserved a long time ago. You know, um, I, I think he is one of those guys that's always done right for the company. He's done right by the company. Um, he's he's been a great ambassador for the company outside. You know, he's done. He's taken a back seat when called for. He's taken you know he's taken his title reigns when called for. I just I, I really think it's it's really really cool to see uh, good things happen to good people. And I I think that you know um, as much as we we want to knock like you know people getting reality shows or this or that or the other thing. Um, you know, just like, listen, you know, we all knock Cena and Nikki Bella and we knock all this, you know, it's, it's everybody's fodder or whatever. Um, I, I just think for the Miz, it's, it's a little bit different because if you would have said like the dude from the real world was going to one day marry Maurice Ouellette and, and end up like being WWE champion, uh, what, what is he at now? Seven, eight time, eight time intercontinental champion. Uh, you know, all, all the accolades, all the championships, main eventing WrestleMania, all like you look at his, like you literally, you look at his resume and it's more first ballot than probably some people that are in the WWE hall of fame. I mean, this man has had a hell of a career and he's not done with it yet to where we're thirsting for more feuds to see him. And it's, and it's almost like he's getting better with age too, man. And I, I just, we don't ever take enough time to take, take a step back sometimes and truly appreciate characters. Like, like I've been doing with Corbin lately. I fucking love the, the character development in Corbin. And I love that he's real, like th- this every week he's getting better and more natural in his character. Like, I, dude, I'm, I'm loving Corbin's character every fucking week, man. And like, we never really take a step back or a lot of podcasts don't. And just, just, you know, like not, not congratulate. Cause sure. It's fucking nobody listening to this important. I don't think, um, no, our listeners are important. You guys, we love you. Um, but we know that you guys are just like us, like just kicking it and just, you know, hanging out. But I do. I'm just. I'm happy for the Miz. I, I know. I don't. I. I, I don't know if, it, if there's still a polarizing feeling about him. But it, to me, it does seem like a lot of people are finally starting to give him the credit that like a lot of us were giving him. I don't want to say a lot, but there, there were some of us that were giving him a long time ago. So it's just crazy to think that the Miz has been with that company already for like over twelve, what twelve years, thirteen years. Yeah, that's crazy. Wild. That's crazy, man. So I don't know. I, and I just thought that like, you know, it's it for all the, all the whatever. And like, you know, with, with, it, it's just, it's, it's really good to see. Uh, it's good. Like I said, it's good to see good things happen to good people. Um, I've always been a fan of, of the Mises and I guess that's just my little, my little, uh, diatribe there about, uh, it's, you know, sometimes we, we overlook that we, we do, we overlook the really, really good stories. Um, like Tommaso Ciampa coming out as Muhammad Hassan's fucking lawyer. Back in 2005, you know, or, or, uh, Lars, uh, Lars, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lars Sullivan. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm um, had a brain freeze there guys, but, um, you know, that story with him in WWE magazine, how his girlfriend left him, you know, that whole, there's, there's so many good stories in wrestling right now, including me losing my voice right there. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to toss it back to you, Josh, but yeah, and I, I, I 
look for the great stories, man. Everyone's nitpicking so much because you we're addicted to the adrenaline of conflict and it's time that we start, uh, decaffeinating ourselves. Uh, and, and let's, let's start to look for the, the, the good, the good. I want to read a tweet from Knight Jackson. This came out a couple of minutes ago. Um, anytime you have the option to counter a negative comment or action with something positive and uplifting, then do it. It might be hard at first, but the better you train yourself to get involved, the happier you'll be. So it's a little positive uh, encouragement out there for you good folks. Um, even though it's a positive quote, we are transitioning to our final segment of today's show called A Nimrod Summer. Uh I don't have any like cheesy game music that you hear on local sports talk radio in the background. <laughs> like we don't have um, the Street Smart theme song on here or Family Feud playing in the background. <laughs> Street Smarts. Street Smarts. Um, all right, here we go. So basically, what's going to happen in this segment? I'm going to read three tweets. We can laugh about it. We can just. Take our natural reaction and go from there, and then uh, we'll wrap it up for you guys today. All right? Yeah, my so, my mic might have been muted when I was talking, like when I was praising him. Is there? So that whole Miz part might have been gone. <laughs> so if it was, whatever. If you missed me, I, I was just like a little two, three, four minute thing about how I appreciate the Miz's career. So if that was gone, I keep muting it just to like not get the background static. I keep failing you. I'm like star screen. All right, I won't give out the user names for these. Uh, we'll keep these uh, confidential, all right? Uh, first one, the booking of Roman Reigns is like a relationship between a dad and a stepdaughter. It's never good at first, but eventually you get to the point where you don't give a shit about the guy and you just want him to die. That's the first one. <laughs> People are so fucking over dramatic, and they. I like that they try to look for. The people's takes are trying to look for the most obscene, ridiculous, like nonsensical fucking analogy that they can find anymore, because that doesn't even fucking make sense at all. Um, <laughs> that's so ridiculous. There are so many stepdads out there going. I have a great relationship with my daughter or my stepdaughter. <laughs> um, Sam, Sam loves her fucking dad. That's what I mean. Uh, most. Oh my god, there's some real fucking. I hope I hope that was from a dude's account because it's going to show how petty and, and fucking in, insecure. Yeah, I love not knowing where these come from. Go on. Yeah, we won't we won't give out names. Uh, next one. Here we go. WD, WWE logic. What would I what would I what would I rather have WWE logic or twelve twelve twelve? Wait, no, what? Twenty one twelve. My bad. Oh, so WWE logic or the end of the Mayan calendar? Yeah. So that's that's how far we're reaching. So someone's yeah. obviously trying to be funny. That's more of like an analogy, but that's still. I mean, that's we we moved past that. The funnier part about what happened with the Mayan thing in, in uh, 12, uh, 21, 12 is what people didn't realize is the, we did, the world did totally change in 2012. Yeah. And it is, and I don't, so laugh all you want about what the Mayans predicted, but the world is absolutely from 2012 on, from the 2000s on, you could say it, but 2012 on was, there was a significant turning point. And uh, so, but, but comparing that to, so we're going to say WWE logic versus a Mayan calendar. So they're basically just saying, uh, it's ridiculous and insane is what they're, is I guess what they're trying to compare it to, or they're just tossing out shit because they think it's, I, I find a lot of people that really don't know comedy and they really don't know humor. They'll just grab onto something that everybody knows and they'll just attach it to that. So it'll be like, Oh, that's almost as put together as Stonehenge. <laughs> and they have like a real bad laugh afterwards and it's fucking terrible. That's what that reminds of to me. I was like, oh, she's just put together as Stonehenge. Ah, get it? Or like when I was watching Judge Deneen Pirro fucking run up the people going, fucking running around the woods going, where is Hillary Clinton? I don't know, you dumb bitch. Why are you in the woods? I don't know. Like, I watch these news shows like, what, what, are, what are you people doing? To bring this full circle, um, this one is just absolutely blasphemous uh, as I'm reading this right now. All right, here we go. <laughs> 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 I like where this is going. <laughs> While the Don Marie Tory Wilson angle during the ruthless aggression era was uh, meant to have edginess and it kept 
it kept me on my toes. When I look at Sasha Banks and Bailey and what they do on Raw, it makes my brain hurt. What the f- what? <laughs> so so here's here's the thing. Number one, like, he's saying basically that he he could be in the same lane, uh, wavelength with what's going on with Tori Wilson and Don Marie because it was an actual storyline. What's going on with uh, Sasha Bailey is hurting his IQ, I guess, or whatever. Uh, right, because the the ultimate backstab isn't going to be the ultimate payoff. Like this whole like, oh, I love you and I'll always love you. That's that's Shawn Michaels tuning up the band, looking at Ric Flair, saying, "I love you. I'm sorry." Boom. Like it's it's. I, I, I ultimately think Josh, and this is where this is where I think there's a lot of fear in men right now. And you can, listen, you can tell by a lot of people like, and what kills me is if you sit there and you watch glow and you talk about how good glow is and you're criticizing on women's pay-per-view again, it's, you're showing your hand, but right. this goes back to, um, a fear that women are going to not only can, t- can take over something that used to be male dominated. And I think there's a lot of people that are looking at it as, well, they're taking a spot from a man and that should be a man spot. And no, it shouldn't be. I oh, mean, like this is this is where it's starting to get totally out of control, because that right now I think the Bailey and Sasha Banks storyline has been incredible, and that's why I was so like keep the title away from them, keep like you know I, I kind of in a way do want it to, to be like a loser has to leave the show or you know maybe they do stretch this all the way out to Evolution, um, but I like right now I think that this this has been told so in such a, a, a wonderful way and I and listen women get soap operas, women get storytelling better than men because they know how to check their ego at the door and put the team first. And, and I'm sorry, but that's why I used to hire, I used to uh, hire mostly women. They were better workers. They didn't complain as much. Men stand around and bitch about other dudes all day long. Women work their asses off because they have to just to prove that they're equals. And what we're seeing right now in the women's division is a locker from locker room full of women. Basically, Proving every one of these stupid internet smarks wrong week after week after week after week after week. And I don't care if you're 65 or 15 years old, if you're not into the women's division by now, and if you're not like Sasha and Bailey's storyline right now, dude, it's like that's to me, it's one of the most in- intriguing, engaging storylines on Raw. Right. You know, um, so I, I can't, I can't imagine, so to say that it makes your brain hurt, that you don't, you don't appreciate storytelling. And again, like, you know, you have to take a step back and remember, you're watching a, a kid's show. You know, like these segments have all been, if you've noticed, in the first two hours of Raw, they never went to like a third therapy segment to one week, like in the third hour. It was just the first hour and the second hour. Right. So, you know, maybe this storyline isn't for you, but there's 30 other storylines going on right now. This is a variety show. When your stock is trading at $85 per share, you are in an entertainment brand. You're not alternative rock anymore. You're not just like uh, top 40 hip hop. You're top 40. WWE is top 40 radio, and you're going to hear everybody from Linkin Park to Prince to Madonna to to, to uh, Drake to who am I missing from today that I don't know who the hell they are. Alicia Cara, is that somebody? That's somebody, right? Is Alicia Cara somebody? By the way, speaking of music and stuff, I want to send some good vibes to Debbie. Is that somebody? Is that a person? Alicia, right? Yeah. That's a yeah. singer, right? Okay. Yep. Okay. That's what I thought. My daughter likes her. <laughs> I'm just making sure that I'm not... Okay. I got, I got one more, too, before we go here, because uh, this one's just kind of showing the whole bail shut this thing. Oh, look. Another recap of the opening segment of Raw. Oh, look, I would rather have 10 more recaps of it because it's drilled to the point that something's cool happening. I didn't know. Oh. So let me. Go ahead. Let me ask. So, okay, so why is it okay then when it's Daniel Bryan retiring and they show it again before the next thing? Or why is it okay when it's CM Punk cutting a pipe bomb and they show it the next thing? Or why is it okay when it's somebody, when it's a dude doing something that it's like, it's inspirational or it's touching or they're, they're paying homage to somebody and it's, they'll show it fucking 50 times and dudes cry every time. But because it's women, it's like, Oh, you're shoving it down our throats. Now it's called marketing, man. You know? And some people, like some people don't watch shows like you. People forget we're in the wrestling bubble. 
we watch, we're programmed to watch these shows in a certain order. Outside of the wrestling bubble, they don't give a shit. Some people might not have seen Raw and they just are flipping through and want to see the beginning of SmackDown. That's what we fail to realize. There's such a bigger world outside of that stupid fucking bubble that everybody encapsulates themselves in. On that note, we're going to wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, uh, we didn't find anybody that was betrayed this week, but uh, there was some weird analogy. About I feel betrayed. Doctor. Nobody was betrayed, so I feel betrayed. Yeah. <laughs> Step up your game up, man. <laughs> but, hey, with wrestling Twitter... It, it keeps getting worse. So uh, I'm pretty sure I have some good stuff for you guys next week. Uh, with that said, my name is Josh Lopez. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Notorious Uh Make sure to check out my website, ProWrestlingTrainers.com. Um, also, uh, if you guys are listening to the podcast, please give us a rating, a four- or five-star uh, rating on, uh, on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review. What do you like about the show? If you have any suggestions for the show, please. I'm all open ears for any suggestions for you guys. Uh, we do this show for you guys and remind everybody that wrestling is fun. And we're having a blast. So if you like what we're doing, uh, promote our stuff on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you uh, have your social media platforms in. We appreciate you guys uh, chilling uh, sometimes with us. By the way, I, I do want to mention this. I know the runtime say it's like two hours in, and I pay with you like, oh, man, man, a two-hour podcast or something like that. I, 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 I want to give props to Mike and everybody that's been reaching out to us that actually listen to the show. The fact that our shows are like two hours but it never feels like it, <laughs> I don't know how that is, but we appreciate you guys do check it out because it's not about – like setting out shows for a long time. We're just having good conversations, and time just flies by fast. So, Was, real quick, is, 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 does Mike have the Astros logo? Yes. Listen, yes. yeah. So, real quick, listen, yo, brother, dude, I totally apologize. I, here's 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 the reason why I, you know my boy told me about what was what was going on. That's why you know. Um, listen, long story short, whenever uh, whenever that dude was spreading on and lies on uh, on his little fucking podcast about me and and like why I allegedly left podcasting. Which the you know what and fuck it here is the real reason uh, for me to break some doors down. Uh, like I told you guys before, you know my daughter was getting picked on by you know I, it, you know if the only time with the election like how this fucking little asshole was talking about was my daughter was getting picked on on an everyday basis by some dudes on the bus like getting tormented that women can't do what men can do, and so she'd come home from school like crying all the time. Sorry, your podcast don't mean shit when my little girl is you know and then my little girl came out to me. And she came out to me first and then she came out to Sam. And so then, you know, so no offense to, to anybody that, you know, so Mike, basically what I'm saying is once, once, you know, some things were said on a podcast that were, that were absolutely erroneous. And then I saw some things that were being said about me online. Um, anybody that was like even a fan of the new, of, of that certain, whoever they are, um, that uses fake names. What's the one dude's name? Chris. Or something, whatever, uh, whatever his oh, real name is. Bad. You can check out Malta in the morning. I'm using the air quotes right there. Yeah, whatever his name is, Chris or whatever. Um, but yeah, so whenever I saw like that and I heard about a lot of stuff like that, it's basically anybody that was in, in yeah, absolutely, it was guilt by association. But seeing like a weird mob mentality by just somebody, basically like like almost like spoiled little entitled white boys do when they don't get their way uh, when somebody tells them no. Uh, so that, that's what it was, brother. I just basically like anybody that was affiliated with, with, with that or, or even fans of, I just totally took off. So you know, I apologize for anything on that. And, um, it was just, when I saw that going on, rather than popping off on people, I just, uh, just, you know, blocked a bunch of people because to be quite honest, those, that was the last thing I gave a shit about was what people on fucking Twitter cared about me when my little girl was coming home from school every day, uh, in tears. So, and like kids are like pushing around of receipts and shit just because Donald Trump won an election. So if that's how you want to attribute it and you want to brag about that and play the soft story on a podcast about it, there's the real side of the story. Like my daughter's not here today, so I can, I'm, you know, I'm a little more free to talk about like realistic stuff. So, um, so that's why I get so uh, angry about that situation too. So, um, but you know, but he who laughs last laughs the loudest and they don't call me Joker for nothing. Remember the Joker is wild. Um, and you know what I'm talking about? We got some secret recordings and, uh, when the tapes come out, uh, he who laughs, laughs, laughs the loudest. So, um, you guys are all going to see the true faces of some people here pretty soon. But, uh, Mike, but to you, brother, dude, I apologize, man. I appreciate your support. And, and, and I'm, I'm serious, dude. Hit me up anytime on there. And that's why I say hit me up on Twitter, guys. Like, like for good conversations, hell yeah. Um, I just, I close my stuff off because 
I don't like to deal with all the riffraff and shit because I'm nearing 40. I got a kid. I got a job. I got a house. I got shit. I got to motherfucking do. Uh, I don't got to deal with fucking bullshit on Twitter. Cause when people start to give me bullshit, even like I, I feel so bad accidentally. I, 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 I tripped on my boy, uh, uh, my boy, Matt, the beef. And just cause I didn't realize he was being sarcastic. Cause it's, you know, Twitter's just such a negative fucking place anymore. And it was like, you know what? That was for me. It was like, you know what? I'm closing my shit back up. So I can just start clowning again and be, and you know, be fun. So, um, so yeah, so Mike and, you know, and, and hit me up, but that's, that was the story brother. Um, and that was, you know, I felt like it was a good avenue to tell us. So, um, apologize for the guilt by association, but I hope you understand what it was. It was more of a, you know, thing where it was a family issue on my end. Family comes first. My little girl comes first, man. Fuck that. Right. <laughs> you kidding me? Um, make, you, you want to conversate with the conference, uh, hit them up at Adam Bailey 13. Um, the, or at Pinky great, Vice. Either one at this point. You can, I, well, whatever folks today. Yeah, <laughs> I guess whatever. Pinky Vice is the easier one to use. I mean, the Adam Bailey 13 one, I'm just keeping that as a handle with like, there's just like a couple people on there. Yeah, the, the Pinky Vice one is because then that, that's the one that I'll, I'll, I'll bullshit with like sports and wrestling with. We'll also, we'll also give a shout out to the great Lady Nexus as well for her appearance on the show last week. That was a lot of fun. So we'll give a shout out to Sam. The She's good, awesome. The sister. Throwing out the two sweet, the good sister out there. Mm-hmm. That Lady Nexus. So thank you guys so much for checking out episode 116 of the Josh Lopez Wrestling Podcast. We'll be back here next week to uh, Galvan about SummerSlam and all the stuff going on with G1. And, it's uh, the Summer of Slams. Yes, sir. The Summer of Slams. Um, for the conference, I'm the Tori Josh Lopez. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, keep, it, keep it on the positive. You are the director of your life story. Never let anybody impugn your character or your integrity. With that said, we're out, bitches.